Ask Ken Johnson about Rocky Point. He's the Edmonton engineer who got the White Pass recognized as an engineering icon of the 19th century. Coming upon Rocky Point, it was a sheer cliff going down from the top right down to the Skagway River. And what they had to do was notch out a 15-foot wide area for the rail bed to go into. Heaney's men drop in each shift at the end of ropes. So in starting it, they had to have men rappel down from the top to actually get little footholds where they could start actually pounding in the holes for the black powder to blast. And of course, that was a very difficult thing. So they would start from the top and pound out little footholds and start blasting it down, down, down. And all the rock was heading over into the Skagway River. Ken Johnson started out as a surveyor's assistant. If he'd been a surveyor then, he'd have used this antique transit. He might have worked on one of those five crews and argued around the campfire over which crew had found the best route. And it's interesting that different survey crews had different opinions. Survey crews on the west side were coming through and saying this was the place he would have wanted to construct. Survey crews coming through and surveying the east side saying, no, this is better. This has, has a longer distance to go and a, a, and a less steep grade coming up. Slippery rock takes time, but the tunnel is a test. After Rocky Point, it was a fairly easy construction coming up through Glacier and then up to Slippery Rock, which presented a similar problem to Rocky Point. Rock, steep slope, and having to cut a notch out. So that, again, presented all the same problems they had at Rocky Point. This time, they're now twice the distance from Skagway, so they had to haul all the stuff up on the Brackets Road and continue the construction. The completed rail line was the supply line for the railway, so all the heavy things, such as rail, which is 56 pounds a foot, had to be brought in by train. There was no way that you could bring in this, this stuff in on Brackett's Road, so they were very limited as to what they would do. If we look back 100 years, we would have seen probably a blacksmith shop up on top, and then the ropes that the, the workers were actually hanging down to do the drilling for the black powder. And then, of course, you'd see a bunch of activity coming up from the bottom as they were bringing up all the equipment that they actually would supply all the activity right there. I mean, this would have just been a, a, an anthill of activity from all sides. This is really the only tunnel that was constructed along the road, but they had this gap, this big trestle in between that they couldn't build before they started building the tunnel. They'd have to survey it in and be very, very sure they were starting at the right point, come in from the top and bring the equipment in from the bottom and just start going at it. And again, this idea of starting from more than one point, they also started the other portal or the other entrance coming in from the other side so they have the most efficiency and get it done as quickly as possible. Surveyors pray they meet in the middle. You measure it once, you measure it twice, and you keep measuring as you're going along so that you're reasonably sure that the, the two are going to meet. And if they don't, you sort of have to fudge it a little bit and blast it until it's straight. The darkness, your working efficiency goes down by about half, and then the cold reduces it to a, another half of that. So you're really working at about 25% of what you can do in the summer months. So this, of course, you have to keep working on some projects during the winter, but it takes much, much longer. Ken Johnson coined the phrase sourdough engineer to describe those who work north of 60. Engineering up here presents unique challenges, long supply lines, isolation, snow and ice. Once the construction passed Slippy Rock and Tunnel Mountain, they hit the snow of White Pass Summit. And the snows up here can get in excess of 20 feet. So in other words, you're not spending resources now on constructing the railway. You're spending resources now on actually clearing it so the construction can continue. And the winds up here are blistering at times. So you can imagine at 30 or 40 below, with winds howling at 30 or 40 miles an hour, the, the, the construction is just slowed to a, a trickle. A century ago, Lewis Lake was above Ken Johnson's head. But the railway accidentally lowers it 20 meters. There's still much to learn working north of 60. The villain is permafrost. What happened when they started digging the channel is that they encountered permafrost soils, which have ice in amongst the soil. And what happens when water flows through permafrost is it starts digging deeper and deeper. What they ended up with was a channel that was probably six or seven meters deep, lowering the water level to where we are now, and created a situation where they had a much bigger construction enterprise to finish the project around Lewis Lake. 